Yeah. Cleveland Farrell, defensive end. The Niners signed him. Everyone kind of scoffed, like, you know, okay, that guy was a bust. And right. everyone's saying, like, Drake Jackson's going to be the guy who emerges. And it may be Drake. Although Chris Kasarik said, you know, you're two, you're three. Sometimes it takes these young guys a little bit longer. He just hit the three plate club. Like, he's got promise. I saw Cleveland right. Farrell at OTAs in minicamp. He's really right. strong. Yeah. He's a grown man. He's 26. Yes. He had three sacks in minicamp in, in one day. So if one guy's asserting himself so far, it's Cleveland. Mm -hmm. What do you th what do you know about this guy? Well, he's uh, Mike Mayock's, uh, you know, trap crush. Um, yeah. He was their first guy. Um, kind of shocked people with how high he went. But mm -hmm. um, the resume tracks. He was a uh, he was a all all American in 2016. Um, ACC Defensive Player of the Year in 2018. The year yeah. before he got drafted, he's played in big games. The kid knows how to show up now. When he came to the Raiders, he was kind of, I mean, where he got drafted, I don't want to say it was not placed where he wasn't adequately placed where he should have been drafted, but he got asked a lot to do in Oakland. Uh, mm -hmm. And he wasn't given the type of job skill set that he's going to be asked to do here, where he's going to be asked to get off the ball, be able to hold down the gap, create leverage, and go get the quarterback. And, and Oakland, he's 6'4", 260. Um, if we got to go with body type, i say he more leans towards what you would see in Charles and Minihue, um, mm -hmm. a little rangy. I was just but, thinking that. I was just yeah, thinking that. But, yep. a lot, but Charles with a little bit more frame, with a little bit more on top of him. Uh, and I think that if we're just going with body type, right, for, for what we would want in an NFL player – He's he's much more further along than Drake is um, for what yeah. we, for what we will want, right? And Drake's right. on his way. Dr Drake uh -huh. is coming as we get closer. To no the shot season, at Drake. Drake is super yes. young. Yeah. As we get closer to the season, I feel like it's time to start bringing in all of the resources that we have to gather for our journey, right? Mm -hmm. And we what, the things that we want Drake to do have been well documented but that don't make that don't mean we don't want him on our team that doesn't mean he's not going to be an asset right but what we want um moving forward for what we know we need in that spot because we are um a very good defense is we need a consistent level of productivity from opposite Nick Bosa and i think that Cleveland Cleveland Farrell is somebody that the Niners see has a a viable chance to doing it, not just an outside chance. Um, yeah. The way I see this wide nine fit, I feel like it, no one really runs it except the Niners. I mean, not no, but it, it's kind of their thing. And yeah. you see a lot with, with D linemen. Sometimes it just clicks with them in this scheme. And they just, like Arden Key, Kerry Hyder. Like, they're good here, not necessarily other places. And, right. you know, we've seen Drake Jackson here. He didn't tear it up on the 49ers in this scheme. Like, maybe he's a good fit for it. Maybe it'll work out. We don't know. Cleland mm -hmm. Farrell is kind of like that guy. He's been in a different scheme. He's been reading and reacting. He hasn't been, like, it might just click for him the way it clicked for Amenehu and Arden yeah. Key. Not saying it will, but all I know is that OTAs, he was the one flashing. I haven't yeah. seen Drake Jackson make a play yet, even in practice. So I'm intrigued. And also, you mentioned Amenehu. What did Chris Kasarik do with Amenehu and Arden Key to get to make them instant contributors when they sucked? They didn't suck, but they weren't contributors before they were here. What did he do? He put them on the outside. He, he, he would bring them inside on, on pass rush downs. So a yeah, many on, who all sorry. of a sudden, he right, them on, yeah, he put them on the inside, yeah. sorry. Correct. He put them on so the both inside. those guys became interior pass rushers. Is that the plan for Cleveland Farrell? Because I mean, I mean he's bigger. He's yeah. bigger than Charles and Minnie Hugh. Um, yep. He's a lot more stout, and and really, uh, it's what you, yep. it's 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 what we all envisioned when we finally when we got him inside of the building. We did expect him to kind of have a reclamation project on what was expected of him in Oakland. He, I don't think that we're going to be asking him to do all of that um, here mm -hmm. um, in San Fran. I think that uh, Cleveland also um, he, for for what he did flash with because I really thought that. That the, the Raiders brought him in to kind of do be everything pass yeah. pro go get the quarterback to be Nick Bosa right but what he was good at right away was stopping the run um, Cleveland Farrell is good against stopping the run and that's Correct. something that we had we've had had problems with a man he was in yeah yeah not yeah. good yeah not and good Arden Key was things. not good yeah yeah and those are yep. the things that we had problems with uh, later in the season because teams, in order to supplant a good pass rush, 
one of the best things that you have to do is you have to know how to run the ball. So a lot of teams are going to try to run the ball against our defense to make us prove that we can stop the run first before we start giving them opportunities at their quarterback. And, so and I, losing Samson Ebukam is a big loss uh, at, from the run defense standpoint. Uh, yes. The, the way D'Amico would talk about him and Robert Sala before is that he was the best run defender on the edge that the Niners had, even better than Bosa, no shot at Bosa. That's how much respect they had for Ebukam. So I don't know that Cleveland Farrell can do that because Ebukam could set the edge and contain a quarterback. He's so fast for a guy. He's so strong. Farrell's right. a little bit bigger. I don't know if he's his mobile. Anyway, if he could be a, a starting base end and then on pass rushdowns, sometimes when you want to give Eric Armstead or Javon, uh, Javon Hargrave a blow, move him inside. Yeah. Could Kick work. him down. And then that's work. When you and even Drake. if he can't do that, just as a base end to stop the run is good right, right away. And then but he might be able to do more. If we do it that way, Iggy, if you think about it, uh, that'll also give Drake his opportunities to get reps. Being mm -hmm. able to kick Cleveland down and, and put Drake on the outside. Yeah. And so, only play him on pass rush down so he doesn't have to worry yeah. about something. And then, you yeah. know, also, also uh, social engineer some of his skill set. Drake is very athletic. You know, he, yeah, he can, can do run. Stunts. Yes. He can do stunts, he can, all that stuff. He's very fleet of foot. He can change directions. Yeah. For the change, the, the change of direction that Drake Jackson has is, is very, very elite. That is some of the things that we did see out of him right away that that made the second round pick feel like a steal. So Drake Jackson has uh, he has worth. Um, he has worth that belongs on this team. It's just that, you know, he's on the strongest unit in, on our team, if not right. in the National Football League. So right. the standards are on a whole nother level. Right. And look, I, I didn't play football. You played football. You played in the trenches. That's in the NFL. Those are grown men. It's grown. Men. Like you. It's grown man. Like I, we saw Kinlaw come in. Kinlaw was the strongest dude in in the SEC. He came into the NFL. He went one on one against Lake and Tomlinson the first day in training camp. And I struggled. mean, sorry, dude. Like that's a grown man who who's yeah. got better technique than you and even more strength. So, yeah. uh, Drake Jackson, you got a future. But Cleveland Farrell is twenty six. It's a grown man. There's no questions about his strength, and mm -hmm. he's the one already making plays at mini camp. So I think he should be on Niner fans' radar as someone who could actually matter this year right and this is the chris kasarik reclamation project of the year feral and yeah and drake I, might be I, a future project i'm here to see it uh i think that i think that cleveland when he came in he touched on it right away in his um in his opening interview um during the summer that it's been known why defensive linemen come come into this organization and they come out with better situations or they revive their career or change the narrative of their career um so he already knows why he's here yeah. Um, and he just doesn't strike me as somebody who will come in here and waste this type of opportunity. So I, I'm, I'm excited for him because I feel like we, it's, a uh, it's two deals. It's two people with like-minded interests, right? Yep. He's trying to revive his career and yeah. we need somebody to play outside of, of their, of their salary to be Yeah. Honest. And I think about it, like, who are you betting on to have a bigger year this year? Well, I'm going to say my thought process, Drake okay. or Farrell, Drake or Farrell. Well, Drake probably has more upside, but Farrell is 26 and he's got all the urgency. It's it's now or never. Yeah. So he's got the strength. He's got the urgency. He's probably got the mindset to show out every day of practice like I saw him do in minicamp. Drake, and, and I mean, he's, he's still growing up. Drake thinking, and, I got uh, future, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong. It, we got him for a year. How long did we get clean? One. Yeah, yeah, he's not making that much money. It's all about yeah, what he so can show this year to make money next year. So it's a dude. Yeah, yeah, this could this be, this a could contract be something for him. that he could like catapult his career a completely different direction. So, you know, know you know what the meeting was when they sat down. It's like, look, we can't offer you more than the minimum, but, but let me show you what Charles and Menahue got this year. Let me show you what Arden Key got the year before. That could be you. Yeah, and that's why he took the job. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it, it's one thing I will say that I love about our team is that for what it's worth. There, if you have a starting job on this team, it's because you earned it, right? Yep. But there's too much competition on this team for anybody to just, you know, sit down and be an incumbent and just think they have a starting position. So, yeah. again, we got Drake in the second round. Shoot, we we let go of picks that we that we took two three right took two picks on. I mean, we we don't care as far as our organization is concerned. Like whoever gets on the field to help us win. Yeah. And this is why the NFL is so tough. Like, Drake, you think you're really good. Like, no, I'm not, no offense. Like, you got this pedigree, your second round pick. Everyone's talking about how good you can be. But now you got to compete with a guy who's five years older than you, stronger than you, 
uh, probably more mature than you because his career is on the on the brink of collapse right now. I got mm -hmm. more to lose than you. Yeah, uh, it's a contract. You're like, hey man, like I'm betting on Cleveland just because. And, and, and expectation. Yeah. This guy, yeah, Cleveland Furl was a legit guy in college. Oh yeah. Right? No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me. Like, and, and Drake was not. Let me real quick. Cleveland yeah. Farrell, uh, twenty-seven sacks in college. Eleven and a half his last year. Nine and a half the year before that. Like Drake had like ten sacks in college. Yeah. It's all a projection like, to Drake. That's, yeah. And that's something that I feel like as fans, you know, we treat the, we treat the guys like baseball cards, right? They uh -huh. come in and then we care about them. We may flip them <laughs> over and, and look at their stats for a couple of minutes, you know, and then we yeah. think we know about them. But we're talking about pedigree of player here and. Cleveland Farrell is the number four. He was a number four overall pick. He was the ACC defensive player of the year. Yeah. He's an yeah. all-American. Cleveland Farrell is looking at Drake Jackson like, kid, you better be ready because I'm not playing with you. And that's no. the league. And like Drake Jackson, he had, I'm looking at it, he had 12 and a, 12 and a half sacks in college. So everything, like it's all been a projection for Drake Jackson. He, he was a late second round pick, could have fallen farther than that. Niners acting like they had this huge steal. Yeah, if it all pans out for Drake, but he never ever proved it the way that Cleveland did in the in the ACC. So again, oh, maybe Drake Jackson now, is better than him, but is he better than him now? Honest, I don't know. I have to do this, Iggy, because there's somebody right now who's thinking the way I'm thinking. You know, we just built the case for Brock over Trey with this with this Cleveland Farrell versus Drake scenario. Well, I, I see what you mean. But again, like this, we just built this would be scenario. more like Darnold. This would be more like Darnold because Farrell's 26. I think Darnold's okay. 27, 26. Like, like he's 26. So it's just a guy, like a, a guy who's approaching his, like, because again, yeah, right. uh, what's okay, his face? So Darnold's true. on a one-year deal too. Yeah, Darnold's a 26-year-old, one-year deal, that's about to true. wash out. Not, not Third trade, pick, fourth not, pick. Yeah. yeah, it's Darnold. Not Trey and it's Brock, Darnold. but Trey and Sam. Yeah. That's kind of like... I kind of did. I kind of did. I kind of did. Yeah. But it's a different case. All I'm saying is, Farrell would made plays. I was like, wow. Darnold hasn't made plays like that yet. When Darnold right. does, I'll let you know. But Farrell's like, oh. But yeah, he's beating guys who aren't going to make the team. We'll have to see how he does against... Yeah, yeah. We got to see him. McKivitz. How he does against McKivitz.